Happy Monday, Chargers. Good to see you again. Olivia Deveni. And I'm Ashley Oaks signing on. On this newscast, we'll be bringing you the deets on the Partners in Education Internship Program, the SBCC English Assessment, the International Baccalaureate Program, electives, and more. Get ready for another fun-filled week because DP News starts now. now. Are you interested in any field of design? If so, please submit a project to the Agricultural Design Competition. If you wish to participate in the competition and show off all that talent, please register before tomorrow, March 8th. For more information, visit the High School Design Competition tab at www.afsb.org. This Thursday at lunch in the quad, which is by Mr. Gleason's Garden, DP is participating in the District Wellness Day event. There will be several fun booths and activities for students with chances to win prizes. This activity is hosted by the Good Food Club along with Campus Food Services. If you have any questions about the event, contact Ms. Gaffiti at misgaffiti at sbunified.org. The Partners in Education Internship Program is waiting for your application. If you're at least 16 years old and have plenty of free time, then this program is right for you. Students gain 80 hours of paid experience from a local business or a nonprofit in the community. The application is due Thursday, March 10th at 5. To find out more about this amazing opportunity, swing by the Partners in Education office or, as always, visit the Career Center. Are you looking for college credit and the chance to improve your writing and reading skills? If so, then take advantage of your opportunity to enroll in English 110-111, an SBC dual enrollment course taught on our campus next year. This course is an option for students entering their junior or senior year. Students must take the SBCC English assessment in order to have the option. The assessment will take place in our very own cafeteria on Friday, March 11th at 8 a.m. Students can sign up in the counseling office with Mr. Safro before school, at lunch, or after school. Be prepared with your Santa Barbara City College student ID, a.k.a. your K number, in order to sign up for the assessment. If you cannot take the test on March 11th, then you can go to SBCC and take the test in their assessment office and bring the results to your counselor. Check the SPCC website for the Assessment Center hours. If you have any questions, please contact your counselor directly. Congratulations to Media Haller and Calvin Glass for winning the Creative Studies What Is This contest identifying the circle, square, and triangle. This was held by the Cre Exploring Creativity class. Calling all seniors, Grand Canyon University is hosting two trips for high school seniors to check out their campus for free. Students will have the opportunity to talk to current GCU students Stay overnight in a residence hall and tour the campus. The two dates of this amazing opportunity are March 18th and April 15th. If you have already applied and sent your transcript, then all you need to do is sign the waiver. To RSVP or if you have any questions, contact Travis Mullen at travis.mullen at gcu.edu or 805-574-5418. Our Winter Guard and Winter Drumline have had their second competition of the season. Saturday, March 12th, they will be traveling to Arvin High School in Bakersfield, California. If you see them on campus, make sure to wish them luck. Sophomores, the International Baccalaureate Program is now accepting applications for the 2016-2017 school. Applicants are available at the switchboard in the office from Mr. Sofro in the counseling office and Moran at H15. If you have any questions about the IB program and the benefits of an IB education, please come to H15 this Friday, March 11th, at lunch for a question and answer meeting. Completed applications should be returned to Mr. Sofro in the counseling office or Mr. Moran in H15 no later than Friday, March 25th. Don't miss out on a chance to participate in a fantastic academic experience. Now, here's an elective you may be interested in taking next year. I care about this class because it helps a lot of students improve their photography skills and just if you like taking photos in general, even with your iPhone, like it's just a great way to have fun. I think it really helps people see that there's more to photography than just getting a camera and just having a shot. You really have to take the time to actually make something beautiful. 
great opportunity for students who want to become a photographer. It's fun. You have like a bunch of free time where you can take pictures of anything you want. For me, it definitely got me out in the world more. Uh, you know, I got out, took some pictures, took really nice pictures, and noticed how cool the world is, how much I've been missing for a while. A new club that is bringing a storm to this campus is Soccer for Water Club in S1. Soccer players are playing soccer to raise money for those in need of water here in Santa Barbara. Hey Instagram and Facebook fanatics, make that blue dot green and stay connected with us. Now over to me for the weather. Today's weather is a high of 61 degrees and a 90% chance of rain, as you may have already noticed. And it looks like tomorrow will be clearing up at 70 degrees and sunny. All of these umbrellas, but we still can't make it rain. Hey, Ashley, what do you call mm. dangerous precipitation? A rain of terror. Oh, oh man, that's our campus news. Ashley and Olivia signing out. Have a dandy day, DP. Let's throw it on over to Peter with the sports. What's up Chargers? I'm Peter Apple with your sports report. Before I start, I'll send it over to Ann with an interview with our new fencing team. Carter Block. So Jean-Michel, what happened over this weekend? So this weekend was a uh, high school team fencing tournament. Normally fencing tournaments on an individual basis where each of us competes for our own rank. But this case was special because we actually got to fence four Dos Pueblos against four other high school teams, two of which, uh, Vapa and Shamanad, had their own professional high school fencing teams. So we actually went to beat on, on to beat all of those to get the gold. Wow, impressive. So Carter, can you explain fencing for me? So a team tournament is different from an individual tournament, obviously, because it's a team. So everybody on the team fences everyone else on the team. And then whichever team has more points at the end of that wins. And then all the other and then all the groups fence all the other teams. And instead of having a direct elimination matches, it's just whichever team has the most victories or whichever team has the most points at the end of it. Awesome. Yosef, how can we get involved with fencing? Well, fencing in Santa Barbara is a Santa Barbara club sport, and the guy who runs it is Tim Robinson, our coach. And if you wanted to join, regardless if you're a guy or a girl, you're 70 or you're 10, uh, just go on the website, sign up, and you'll start at the next quarter. And I'm not joking when I say you're 70. We do have, like, four fencers that are, like, what, probably around that age, and they beat me all the time. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for coming in, guys, and congratulations on winning over the weekend. Sending it back over to Peter Apple with the rest of your sports. Track season is off to a great start as runner Hunter Clark took first place in the two-mile, 3,200-meter race at the Don Green Invitational. Championship in the distance competition on Friday. Can we just take a minute to realize how fast 9 minutes and 35 seconds is for 2 miles? I just did the math and that's 4 minutes and 47 seconds a mile. And he did it twice. Nobody touched that man's legs. On Saturday, our track team had, the, had two second place finishers at the meet. Spencer Kemmerer cleared 6 feet 2 inches in the boys high jump. And Kevin Nugan went 38 feet 11 inches in the triple jump. Charlie Melling was third in discus, discus at 147 feet 4 inches. Maddie Pickett, Ali Milam, and Janet Salas hit three homers in their 9-6 win over Webb School in the first game of the Manlet Invitational Softball Tournament in Simi Valley on Saturday. In their second game, they fought hard but lost 2-0 to Newbury Park with Maddie Pickett again, pitching to the tune of five innings with only one run allowed. Girls softball is now 3-2 on the season. Baseball played Saugus High School on Saturday in the fourth game of the Eastern Tournament. We played well but ultimately lost 5-4. Gio Macias stayed hot as usual with two hits and two runs scored and Coulter Nisbet decided he could run the bases and stole three bags for us. Travis Craven started and pitched really well. He allowed one run and four plus innings of work. Baseball plays Westlake High School at 315 on Thursday at home 
so feel free to come out and support. Just a reminder, Varsity Boys Tennis plays at home today versus Campbell Hall at 3, so be sure to come out and watch our boys play. Uh, that's all for your Sports Report DP. Now over to Nandini with your current events. Hey DP, I'm Nandini Braganza, your current events reporter. The South Coast Task Force on Youth Safety has reduced the number of South Coast youth who have any connection with gangs by 75% since they began in 2009. Due to its success, Santa Barbara County officials are talking about starting a similar task force in the North County. This task force would potentially help lower the recent increase in youth violence in, Santa Maria, in the Santa Maria District. Meanwhile, the South Coast Task Force Coordinator, Sal Serrano, said Santa Barbara and Carpinteria High Schools impacted efforts by adopting restorative justice programs that notably decreased the number of suspensions. Thank you for listening, DP.